namu myo ho ren ge kyo namu myo ho ren ge kyo namu myo ho ren ge kyo let it be known that this place is indeed the place of the way here the buddha's attain supreme perfect awakening here the buddha's roll the dharma wheel and here the buddha's enter pari nirvana namu myo ho ren ge kyo buddham saranam gachami May we, with all living beings, deeply experience the great way and give rise to the supreme aspiration. Dhammam saranam gachami. May we, with all living beings, embrace the riches of the sutras and make our wisdom as wide and deep as the sea. Sangam saranam gachami. May we, with all living beings, guide the great community and be freed from all hindrances. We put our faith in the eternal Buddha, Shakyamuni, great benevolent teacher, world-honored one, the Tathagata, abundant treasures, witness to the Lotus Sutra, the separated embodiments of the Buddha in the ten directions in the past, present, and future, the four great bodhisattvas, superior practice, boundless practice, pure practice, and steadfast practice, the bodhisattva, mahasattvas, manjushri, universal sage, maitreya, and all other bodhisattva, mahasattvas, Great Bodhisattva Nichiren, revered practitioner of the Lotus Sutra, founder Nikyo, great teacher of the One Vehicle, co-founder Myoko, Bodhisattva of the Way of Compassion, the guardian spirits of Risho, Kosei Kai, and the countless heavenly spirits in the Ten Directions. May you all be present among us and know our deep devotion. <laughs> Namu Myo Ho Ren Kyo. The unsurpassed, profound, wondrous dharma is rarely met in myriads of kalpas. Now we see, hear, receive, and embrace it. May we understand the foremost teaching of the Tathagata. The Sutra of Innumerable Meanings from Chapter 3, Ten Merits. The Buddha said, My good children, first of all, this sutra can make an unawakened bodhisattva aspire to awakening, make one who lacks kindness aspire to compassion, make one who likes slaughter aspire to great mercy, make one who is envious rejoice for others, make one who has attachments aspire to non-attachment, make one who is miserly aspire to generosity, make one who is arrogant aspire to keeping the precepts, Make one who is angry aspire to forbearance. Make one who is lazy aspire to diligence. Make one who is distracted aspire to meditation. Make one who is ignorant aspire to wisdom. Make one who does not think of liberating others aspire to liberating them. Make one who commits the ten evils aspire to the ten virtues. Make one who is drawn to what is conditioned aspire to what is unconditioned. Make one who is regressing aspire to non-regressing. Make one who commits defiled acts aspire to non-defilement. And make one who has many delusions aspire to extinguish them. Good children, this is called the first unimaginably powerful merit of this sutra. Namu myo ho ren ge kyo. Namu myo ho ren ge kyo. Namu myo ho the Sutra of the Lotus Flower of the Wondrous Dharma from Chapter 2, Skillful Means. At that time, the world-honored one, rising calmly from Samadhi, addressed Shariputra. The wisdom of Buddhas is infinite and extremely profound. The approach to their wisdom is difficult to enter and difficult to understand. It is beyond the comprehension of even Shravakas and Pratyeka Buddhas. Why is this? Because the Buddhas have been in close association with hundreds of thousands of millions of other Buddhas, fully practicing countless teachings of the way, boldly and diligently advancing and making their fame universally known. Having accomplished the extremely profound and extraordinary Dharma, they have taught it according to what was appropriate, but their intention is difficult to grasp. 
Shariputra, since I became Buddha, I have spoken far and wide and taught with various parables and examples from the past, and by countless skillful means I have led living beings, freeing them from their attachments. Why is this? Because the Tathagatas are replete with skillful means in the paramita of knowledge and insight. Shariputra, the knowledge and insight of the Tathagatas are broad, great, profound, and far-reaching. With their infinite virtues, their unhindered wisdom, and their powers, fearlessness, meditations, emancipations, and samadhis, they have entered into the boundless realms and fully attained the extraordinary dharma. Shariputra, the Tathagatas, are able to distinguish all things, explain the teachings skillfully, use gentle words, and bring joy to the hearts of all. In essence, Shariputra, the Buddhas are fully accomplished in the infinite, boundless, and extraordinary dharma. That is enough, Shariputra, I should say no more. Why is this? Because the Dharma the Buddhas have attained is understood only rarely and with great difficulty. Only a Buddha together with a Buddha can fathom the ultimate reality of all things. That is to say, among all things, each has such an appearance, such a nature, such an embodiment, such a potential, such a function, such a cause, such a condition, such an effect, such a reward and from the first to the last, such an ultimate identity. Namu myo ho ren ge kyo Namu myo ho ren ge kyo Namu myo ho ren ge kyo The Sutra of the Lotus Flower of the Wondrous Dharma from Chapter 3, A Parable now this threefold world is all my domain, and the living beings in it are all my children, but now it is filled with disaster and trouble, and only I am able to rescue and protect them. Namu myo ho ren ge kyo, namu myo ho ren ge kyo, namu myo ho ren ge kyo. The Sutra of the Lotus Flower of the Wondrous Dharma from Chapter 10, Teachers of the Dharma. After the passing of the Tathagata, if there are good sons and good daughters who desire to teach this Dharma Flower Sutra to the four groups, how should they teach it? These good sons and good daughters should enter the abode of the Tathagata, put on the robe of the Tathagata, and sit on the seat of the Tathagata. Then, for the sake of the four groups, they should widely proclaim this Sutra. The abode of the Tathagata is a great compassionate heart for all living beings. The robe of the Tathagata is a flexible and forbearing mind. The seat of the Tathagata is the emptiness of all things. Abiding steadfastly in these, they should diligently teach this Dharma Flower Sutra far and wide to bodhisattvas and the four groups. Namu myo ho ren ge kyo Namu myo ho ren the Sutra of the Lotus Flower of the Wondrous Dharma from Chapter 12, Devadatta. The Buddha said to the monks, If in the future there are good sons and good daughters who hear this Devadatta chapter of the Wondrous Dharma Flower Sutra and believe and revere it with pure hearts and without doubt, then they will not fall into the realms of hell, hungry spirits, or beasts. They will be born into the presence of the Buddhas of the Ten Directions. Wherever they are born, they will always hear this sutra. If they are born among humans and heavenly beings, they will enjoy marvelous delight. If they are born into the presence of Buddhas, they will be born from lotus flowers. Namu myo ho ren ge kyo Namu myo ho ren ge kyo Namu myo ho ren ge kyo The Sutra of the Lotus Flower of the Wondrous Dharma from Chapter 16, The Lifespan of the Eternal Tathagata since I became Buddha, countless hundreds of thousands of millions of immeasurable numbers of kalpas have passed. In the innumerable kalpas since then, I have ceaselessly expounded the Dharma, teaching and transforming countless millions of beings and enabling them to embark upon the Buddha way. I employed skillful means to reveal my nirvana in order to liberate all living beings. 
In truth, though, I am not extinguished, for I always abide here teaching the Dharma. Although I am always dwelling in this world, by using my transcendent powers, I cause living beings with distorted minds to be unable to see me even though I am near. All who perceive that I have perished everywhere pay homage to my relics. All who cherish and long for me look up with thirsting hearts. At last, when living beings humbly believe, are upright in character and gentle and flexible in mind, and wish with all their hearts to see the Buddha even at the cost of their lives, then I and all the Sangha appear together on Divine Eagle Peak. At that time, I tell all living beings that I am always here and did not pass away. I use the power of skillful means to manifest both that I am extinguished and that I am not. If in other lands there are living beings who are joyful, reverent, and faithful, I will teach the supreme Dharma among them as well. You not hearing of this merely think I have perished. I see all living beings sinking in the sea of suffering, and I do not appear before them so that they begin to thirst for me. When their hearts are filled with the deepest longing, I then come forth to teach the Dharma. Such are my transcendent powers throughout immeasurable kalpas. I am always on divine eagle peak and abiding in all other places. When living beings see great fires burning at the time of the end of a kalpa, this land of mine is tranquil and calm, always filled with heavenly beings and humans. Its gardens, groves, halls, and pavilions are adorned with every kind of gem, and its jeweled trees are full of blossoms and fruit. Here all living beings take their pleasure, while heavenly beings strike heavenly drums, always making many kinds of music, and showering mandarava flowers on the Buddha and his great assembly. My pure land is never destroyed, yet all see it as consumed by fire and filled with every kind of grief, horror, pain, and distress. Those errant living beings, because of their bad karma, never hear of the names of the three treasures throughout immeasurable kalpas. But those who perform virtuous deeds and are gentle and upright of nature will all see me here teaching the Dharma. At times, for the sake of them all, I teach that a Buddha's lifespan is beyond measure. To those who see a Buddha only after a very long time, I teach that a Buddha is rarely met. Such is the power of my wisdom that its light shines infinitely. My lifespan is of countless kalpas attained through long cultivation of practice. Those of you who have wisdom give rise to no doubt about this, bring doubt forever to an end, for the Buddha's words are valid, not in vain. A physician with skillful means who is actually alive and announces his death only in order to cure his deranged children cannot be accused of falsehood. Like a father to all in this world, I cure their sufferings and diseases. For the sake of ordinary people with distorted thinking, I say that I am extinguished, though truly I am here. Were they always to see me, they would grow complacent and self-indulgent, lose themselves in attachments to the five desires, and fall into evil paths. I always know living beings, those who practice the way and those who do not and for their sake expound various teachings, deliberate each of them accordingly. I am ever thinking, how can I cause living beings to embark upon the unsurpassable way and quickly accomplish embodiment as Buddhas? Namu myo ho ren ge kyo Namu myo ho ren ge kyo Namu myo ho ren ge kyo the Sutra of the Lotus Flower of the Wondrous Dharma from Chapter 20, the Bodhisattva Never Unworthy of Respect. In the past there was a Buddha named King Majestic Voice, boundless in transcendent wisdom. He was leader of all heavenly beings, humans, and spirit dragons all paid homage to him. After that Buddha's passing, when his teaching drew near its end, there lived a Bodhisattva called Never Unworthy of Respect. The four groups of that era were attached to their own views of the teachings. The Bodhisattva, never unworthy of respect, went to wherever they were and spoke to them thus, I could never find you unworthy of respect, for you are practicing the way and will all become Buddhas. When they heard this, they mocked, slandered, and ridiculed him. The Bodhisattva, never unworthy of respect, could endure it gracefully. Having cleared away all past offenses, when he was able to hear this sutra as his lifetime neared its end, 
His six sense faculties were purified. Through this transcendent power, his lifetime was extended. And again, for the benefit of all people, he widely expounded this sutra. Those attached to their own views of the teachings, having been taught, transformed, and brought to perfection by this bodhisattva, were able to abide in the Buddha way. Never unworthy of respect, his lifetime ended, encountered countless Buddhas by teaching this sutra. He obtained immeasurable blessings, gradually acquired merits, and quickly attained the Buddha way. The never unworthy of respect of that era was none other than I myself. The four groups of that era, those who were attached to their own views of the teachings, heard never unworthy of respect say, you will all become Buddhas. For this reason, they encountered countless Buddhas. They are now the 500 bodhisattvas and the four groups of laymen and laywomen gathered before me in this assembly, listening to the Dharma. In my previous lifetimes, I encouraged all these people to listen to and embrace this sutra, the ultimate Dharma that I reveal and teach to people, causing them to abide in nirvana. In age after age, they have received and embraced such a sutra as this. Only after millions and millions of myriads of kalpas of inconceivable reach does the time finally arrive when this Dharma Flower Sutra can be heard. Only after millions and millions of myriads of kalpas of inconceivable reach does the time finally arrive when Buddha's world-honored ones teach this sutra. Therefore, practitioners, when hearing such a sutra as this, after the Buddha's passing, have no doubt or confusion about it. With total concentration, you should widely teach this sutra. Meeting many Buddhas in age after age, you will quickly attain the Buddha way. (laughs) Namu myo ho ren ge kyo. Namu myo ho ren ge kyo. Namu myo ho ren ge kyo. The Sutra of the Lotus Flower of the Wondrous Dharma from Chapter 21, The Transcendent Powers of the Tathagata. After the Tathagata has passed away, those who can keep this sutra will know the causes and conditions as well as the proper sequences of the sutras taught by the Buddha and teach them according to their true meanings. Just as the light of the sun and the moon can chase all darkness away, so these people practicing in this world can bring living beings out of darkness and cause countless bodhisattvas to at last abide in the one vehicle. Therefore, after my passing, those who have wisdom, hearing that these virtues are beneficial, will receive and embrace this sutra. Such people, while on the Buddha way, will be firmly determined and have no doubts. Namu myo ho ren ge kyo Namu myo ho ren ge kyo Namu myo ho ren ge kyo The Sutra of the Lotus Flower of the Wondrous Dharma from Chapter 25 The Bodhisattva Regarder of the Sounds of the World as Universal Gateway When living beings are beset by woes and burdened by countless pains, the wondrous wisdom power of the regarder of sounds can free them from the sufferings of the world. She is in full command of transcendent powers, having fully mastered the skillful means of wisdom. In the lands of the ten directions, there is no place she does not manifest herself. All the evil states of existence, those of hells, of hungry spirits, and of beasts, and the sufferings of birth, aging, illness, and death she gradually brings to an end. Her true regard, pure regard, vastly wise regard, merciful regard, and compassionate regard are always emulated and ever revered. She is a pure, unclouded beacon of light, a sun of wisdom destroying all darkness, a subduer of the winds and flames of misfortune, and a light shining everywhere in the world. Her body is the precept of mercy that roars like thunder. Her mind is wondrous compassion that expands like a great cloud. Together they pour forth the sweet dew of Dharma rain that quenches the flames of delusion in disputes before a magistrate or in fear in battle's array by calling to mind the power of the regarder of sounds. All enemies will scatter and run away. Wondrous voice, world-regarding voice, Brahma voice, and voice of the rolling tide. Hers is a voice unsurpassed in the world. Therefore, she should constantly be called to mind. 
Never have a moment of doubt about the regarder of the sounds of the world, a pure sage who can provide a reliable refuge from suffering, distress, danger, and death. Endowed with every virtue, she beholds living beings with eyes of compassion. Her blessings are an ocean vast and immeasurable. Therefore, with heads bowed, revere her. Namu myo renge kyo namu myo renge kyo namu myo renge kyo. The Sutra of the Lotus Flower of the Wondrous Dharma from Chapter 28, Encouragement from the Bodhisattva Universal Sage. The Buddha said to the Bodhisattva Universal Sage, after the passing of the Tathagata, good sons and good daughters will attain this Dharma Flower Sutra if they fulfill four requirements. The first of them is to be safeguarded by the Buddhas. The second is planting many roots of virtue. The third is joining the assembly of those resolved to become awakened. And the fourth is aspiring to liberate all living beings. After the passing of the Tathagata, good sons and good daughters who fulfill these four requirements will surely attain this sutra. Then the Bodhisattva Universal Sage said to the Buddha, World Honored One, in the last 500 year period of the corrupt and evil age to come, I will guard and protect those who receive and embrace this sutra, free them from disaster and disease, and bring them peace and comfort. I will ensure that no one who seeks to take advantage of them will be able to do so. Namu myo ho renge kyo Namu myo ho renge kyo Namu myo ho renge kyo From the Sutra of the Method for Contemplating the Bodhisattva Universal Sage when there is evil in the eyes, karmic impediments making them impure, you need only recite the great vehicle sutras and ponder their foremost teaching. This is called acknowledgement and remorse for the eyes, which clears away unwholesome karma. The ears hear disruptive sounds that have set the principle of harmony. This produces a disturbed mind, which is just like a foolish monkey. You need only recite the great vehicle sutras and see all things impartially and without fixed forms in order to forever clear away all evils and to hear with heavenly ears in all ten directions. The nose becomes attached to smells and produces sensations according to these impurities. Such a deluded nose gives rise to the dust of delusion according to these impurities. If you recite the Great Vehicle Sutras and contemplate all things as they really are, you will be forever free from bad karma and in future lifetimes give rise to no more. The tongue produces the unwholesome karma of five kinds of evil speech. If you yourself want to control the tongue, you must diligently practice compassion by your pondering the principle of the true tranquility of the Dharma. Divisive and judgmental thoughts will disappear. The mind is like a monkey that never stays still, even for a moment. If you want to subdue it, you must diligently recite the great vehicle sutras and ponder the Buddha's body of great awakening, comprising his power and fearlessness. The body, the master of its sense faculties, is but dust swirling in the wind. Within it, the six desires roam about like rogues, free and unrestrained. If you want to rid yourself of these evils, to be freed forever from the troublesome dust of defilements, to ever dwell in the city of nirvana and to be at ease with a tranquil mind, then you must recite the sutras of the great vehicle and focus the mind on the mother of bodhisattvas. You will gain countless excellent skillful means by pondering ultimate reality. These are called the six methods for purifying the six sense faculties. The ocean of all karmic impediments arises from illusions. If you want to perform acknowledgement and remorse, you must sit correctly and contemplate ultimate reality. All wrongs are just as frost and dew, so the sun of wisdom can melt them away. Therefore, with utmost sincerity, perform acknowledgement and remorse for the six sense faculties. Namu myo ho renge kyo Namu myo ho renge kyo Namu myo ho renge kyo 
May these merits extend universally to all so that we and all living beings together accomplish the Buddha way. May these merits extend universally to all so that we and all living beings together accomplish the Buddha way. May these merits extend universally to all so that we and all living beings together accomplish the Buddha way. Namu myo ho ren ge kyo 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 Having respectfully recited the Great Vehicle Sutra of the Lotus Flower of the Wondrous Dharma, may we transfer its merits to and thus reciprocate the boundless compassion of the Eternal Buddha, Shakyamuni, Great Benevolent Teacher, World Honored One, the Tathagata, Abundant Treasures, Witness to the Lotus Sutra, the separated embodiments of the Buddha in the ten directions in the past, present, and future, the four great bodhisattvas, superior practice, boundless practice, pure practice, and steadfast practice, the Bodhisattva Mahasattvas, Manjushri, Universal Sage, Maitreya, and all other Bodhisattva Mahasattvas, Great Bodhisattva Nichiren, Revered Practitioner of the Lotus Sutra, Founder Nikyo, Great Teacher of the One Vehicle, Co-Founder Myoko, Bodhisattva of the Way of Compassion, the Guardian Spirits of Rishoko Seikai, the Guardian Spirits of Member Families of Rishoko Seikai, and the Countless Heavenly Spirits in the Ten Directions. We reverently offer and transfer the merits of this recitation to all our ancestors and all others who are recorded in our memorial registers, all those whose memorial day is today, and all those who have passed beyond known and unknown to us, wherever they be, so that they may delight in the taste of the Dharma and quickly accomplish the wondrous fruit of supreme awakening. We earnestly pray that with the help of divine guidance and protection, all living beings may awaken to their Buddha nature and world peace may be achieved. Namu myo ho ren ge kyo Namu myo ho ren ge kyo Namu myo ho ren ge kyo We, members of Risho Kosei Kai, take refuge in the eternal Buddha Shakyamuni and recognize in Buddhism a true way of liberation under the guidance of our revered founder Nikyo Nuano. In the spirit of lay Buddhists, we vow to perfect ourselves through personal discipline and leading others and by improving our knowledge and practice of the faith. And we pledge ourselves to follow the Bodhisattva way to bring peace to our families, communities, and countries, and to the world.